Hey everybody, welcome back to BK's Bullets. Today we're going to be talking about Winter Soldier, the complete collection by Ed Brubaker. Hey everybody, welcome back to BK's Bullets. As always, I'm your host, Brent Casina, and today we got a review of Winter Soldier, the complete collection by Ed Brubaker. This is the Winter Soldier book, not Captain America Winter Soldier. That is this book. I got a review of this up on the channel, so if you want to see where Bucky first appeared, check that review out. We are talking about this book, but before we get into this book, I want to ask you to please do one thing, please subscribe. Helps me out, helps the channel grow, lets you know when I drop new videos, all that good stuff. So, Winter Soldier, what is this? Well. This is issues 1 through 14 of the Winter Soldier series. This is, this is the first Winter Soldier series, written by Ed Brubaker, drawn by Butch Geis and Michael Lark, uh, with some help with, uh, well, I don't think that was it. Just those two artists uh, with a lot of inkers and colorists and all that as well. Um, but this contains Fear Itself 7.1 and Winter Soldier 1 through 14, the entire series. So that is what you need to know. So we've been on a journey on this channel. I've been reading the Captain America book since the beginning of the year, I think 2021, maybe the end of 2020, prepping for Falcon and Winter Soldier, all that stuff. We started with Winter Soldier, which I think is pretty good. Um, it's a nice start, not quite an awesome standalone story. Uh, we went through the phenomenal Death of Captain America complete collection. This guy is I think the best one of the bunch but like I said in that video you can't really read it without reading everything before it uh, we went all the way through Captain America Reborn where Steve comes back and Bucky is no longer Cap kinda sort of and we the last Bucky Cap video I did was this one Captain America Prisoner of War and that is the last time that Bucky was in the Captain America title so to speak so after this this book ends and says uh, follow Bucky in Fear Itself. Now, I don't have a Fear Itself trade, but I do have it digitally on Comixology, so I went and read that with the intention of reviewing it, and that was so hum-hum, so, 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 so mediocre that I said it's not even worth reviewing because Bucky Cap, you know, Bucky himself is not really in it that much, so it doesn't really maintain the theme of um, what we've been talking about of reviewing Brubaker's run on the Bucky Cap book, which is what he wanted to write. So we'll skip that one and just say, if you want to go read it, go ahead. Bucky's in it for like all of four pages. Uh, it's written by Matt Fraction, not Brubaker, so that kind of does make sense. And he's not, you know, Bucky's not really the main character. Um, I don't really know who was. Uh, Sin, Thor, um, and Captain America and Iron Man, I think, are the main characters of that event book. So anyway, in Fear Itself, Bucky is presumed dead, and that is where we start off here in Winter Soldier in the Fear Itself 7.1 storyline, or not storyline, it's one issue. Uh, that is the first issue that kicks off this collection here, and it's basically how um, they faked Bucky's death. And there's a fake funeral and all that stuff, and then it starts off with, um, you know, Bucky and Natasha trying to, you know, tell Steve, hey, we're sorry, but this is what we wanted to do. Uh, and it's kind of accepted that this is what people want after the trial of Captain America with, of Bucky in the previous volumes of that book. I've done reviews on all those. You can check them out on the channel. They decided that Bucky needs a break. He needs to go back to doing what he was doing, which is the Winter Soldier. And he, Bucky's trying to atone for some of the things he did as Winter Soldier, continuing this theme that we saw when he was Captain America. My biggest complaint was this is Bucky trying to atone for the Winter Soldier and not really being Captain America and 100% uh, this follows that theme right through it. Um, this book takes, it doesn't take liberties but this is very similar to the uh, Civil War story um, from the movies right where you had Bucky tracking down these other super soldiers these other Winter Soldiers and um, except in this book they're actually like out of the the tubes or whatever whereas we saw them in the tubes at the end of that film when did this come out I want to say this came out like um, it's printed in 2020 
Captain America 2012. Okay, so Winter Soldier came out in 2012. So yeah, this is a couple years before the Captain America Civil War movie. So it makes sense that they maybe lifted that from here. Um, Jasper Sitwell is also in this book. He's a, a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. So I don't know. I assume he was like an existing S.H.I.E.L.D. agent because he was in the, the first couple of movies before we found out he was Hydra, right? Anyway, he's in this book. He's a fun little side character. But this book is Bucky basically tracking down these three other Winter Soldiers and then very quickly after the first arc it turns into a book about um, Bucky and Natasha. Now Natasha, the Black Widow, who has a movie coming out uh, July 7th if you're going to go see it in theaters. If you choose that it's safe to do so, go do so. I think I'm probably going to Disney Plus that shit um, just to be safe and whatever. Uh, I'll watch it again and again and again for 30 bucks and you won't have to go over and over to the movies. That's fine. But anyway, this is kind of also a, a Natasha book, a, a Black Widow book. So it's kind of fitting that we're talking about it as her movie's coming out here uh, very soon, if it hasn't come out already when this drops. So, um, yeah, it's kind of about their relationship, but not really. It's more of how Bucky feels about Natasha the entire way because he's narrating it. Um, he's hunting her at one point in the in the last arc of the book. There's something that happens with her um, where she kind of goes rogue or goes bad, and it's Bucky's job, or he feels like it's his job to stop her. Um, I will say the first arc of this book where he they're just hunting down these Winter Soldiers, I did not feel was very like involved or good. I was kind of like, man, this book is, I don't know what it was. It was just not grabbing me at all. Uh, I mean, it's Brubaker. We've really kind of, we've liked his stories. I mean, not we, I have liked his Cap stuff, especially the first three volumes. But when Bucky became Cap, I really feel like even if this was the story he wanted to tell, um, he didn't have a lot of ideas to follow through on. And this kind of feels more of the same. Like, we're just putting Bucky through the motions. This is the most basic Bucky plot you could probably see. And if I hadn't seen three or four volumes of the Bucky Cap book post death of Captain America of Bucky hunting down old winter soldier plots or villains and stuff like that instead of being fucking Captain America then it probably would have said oh this is a cool idea of Bucky trying to redeem himself or stop old winter soldiers but since it's happened in three or four of those Captain America stories that we've reviewed and that were written before this this just feels like another retread of that same idea so I think that's ultimately where it suffers. Where the book does pick up is in the middle uh, of the three arcs that are collected in here, which is um, there's a Winter Soldier that they don't find in the first one. And uh, this guy wakes up, his name is Leo, and he's going after Bucky because he can. Uh, turns out that Bucky trained this guy way back in time and um, he wants revenge. And that's kind of what takes over the rest, of the you know, the next two thirds of the book. So he's ultimately the villain of it. He's, you know, it's kind of one note. We don't really get to know him. There's no real exposition or anything like that. It's mostly focused on Bucky and Natasha. Uh, and even their relationship, you don't really get a good feel for. Like, you get why, because it was kind of explained and explored in the Captain America book that preceded this one. But it's not really, there's no growth here. Uh, in fact, the way that their relation, relationship ends is on such a sour and disappointing note that it really kind of turned me off from the entire book entirely um, because we've spent so much time you know uh, with Bucky and Natasha being together from the middle of the death of Captain America book when she starts to show up and say hey remember me uh, and they rekindle their romance through the rest of these Brubaker's Captain America run into this one uh, that just the way that it ends is so sour and just kind of I didn't like it at all. You know, it's a, it's a, not really a neat idea. It's definitely something that maybe other writers could have built on, but I don't really remember that anybody building off of that. In fact, when this book came out as single issues, I remember that reading. I don't think I read the first issue or anything at all. I remember seeing the beautiful covers. Uh, the first couple issues have wonderful covers by Lee Bermejo. Here's an excerpt of one, right here. Um, and then Steve Epting kind of takes over on covers for the back half of the book. But look at this beautiful cover by Lee Bermejo here. Wonderful, wonderful cover. Um, I remember seeing this image, and I don't remember hearing hype for the rest of the book. 
Um, so it's no wonder that it ended at 14 or whatever. And maybe there, there, I don't think there's really been a, there's been Winter Soldier books, but they've all been miniseries. Or it was Winter Soldier as the leader of the Thunderbolts, that kind of stuff. It's never really been a spy-centric book at, of Winter Soldier by himself. Uh, he's not, I don't really know if he's strong enough to carry his own book, at least in the Marvel Comics universe nowadays. I think the last book he has was Falcon and Winter Soldier, just titled just like the Disney Plus series, to uh, to jump on that bandwagon, so to speak. So, I don't know. This this book is kind of puzzling. It's enjoyable in the back half, but the start of it is kind of so minimal or mediocre or pedestrian that it's hard to say that I recommend this book to other Winter Soldier fans. Um, I think if you're a completist, you probably do need to read it. If you want to know this thing I'm talking about with Bucky and Natasha, where their relationship ends up, you know, you can get it here. You can also just get it by reading the last arc of this complete collection. Um, I don't feel like it's essential. There's, there's nothing here that's like, you know, oh, this is Bucky's villain going forward, and we've seen this villain, go, you know, throughout time. Every villain that's in here has been kind of eliminated. You know what I mean? And that's kind of what happens in spy stories. Um, and there's really kind of no stakes until until the end of the book here. Um, and I think maybe that was the, the misfire, is that there's no stakes in the beginning arc. It's just them doing a mission just because. Uh, and once the stakes do get set up, you're kind of like, well, you know, we were so focused on being mission in the first arc that by the time we get to the stakes in the second one, and especially the third, do you really care? I mean, you care because it's about Black Widow going rogue, but they didn't really set that up in this particular book. It was set up elsewhere. You know, it's always, I think that's the thing, the weakness about this run with Brubaker is it's, he's always depending on you to have read everything else to, in order to care about what's going on in the book now. Nothing in each arc is really like so fantastic and phenomenal other than the first Winter Soldier arc, Red Menace, and Death of Captain America. I think those are the three of the ones that are the best, and those are the ones people think about when they think of Brubaker's run. They never talk about anything that follows after it. And that's been my biggest complaint. And reading everything else that follows after it, I see why now. Um, because there kind of there is nothing to talk about after that initial you know, three-story run. Uh, and that's unfortunate, because this could have been a really good book. It could have been a really cool, fun ending point to set up Winter Soldier for the rest of the Marvel Universe for other writers to use and the way that Brubaker does it almost kind of puts him away a little bit and it's like you know why would other writers want to touch him the way that this book ends um, so I kind of understand why he maybe fell to the wayside uh, in the comics world as his profile rose up in the movies right um, so it's a little interesting also here I thought it was kind of funny how they're still trying to make make it out that Marvel history that Bucky and Natasha met in the 1950s like I get Bucky being de-aged and all that because they explain the freezing Natasha Romanoff's Black Widow history I've never really understood and I don't even know what it is now currently in the Marvel Universe if they've retconned it or changed it but this whole idea of she's somehow still alive since the 1950s and let, they met when she was still like in her 20s how old is she now um is just a weird thing like there's something in here with the infinity formula um with uh, nick fury that they give to bucky at one point but that doesn't explain black widow and they never bother to revisit it so it's probably something you've got to go and look up on wikipedia on how she's still so young looking if she's indeed been around and been an active part of the marvel universe since the 1950s when she was training in the red room at the time right because she's supposed to be an ex-KGB spy was her origin. And that worked in the 1960s and 70s, but in the 2000s, 2010s when this came out, or even now in 2021, it works less and less well. So I think they've got to adjust that a little bit if they haven't just forgotten it already. Um, maybe that's why these two characters aren't together anymore, because it harkens back to that and they don't want to have to explain it. Um, who knows? So Winter Soldier, I think... Um, I think it's an okay read. I think the back half certainly worth reading if you want to read it. Just know that once you get past that first arc, I think it will pick up for you. Uh, Michael Lark comes in on, on the art for like four issues in the middle there, and then Butch Geist jumps back and um, you know does his thing. 
which I can't really tell if it's super detailed or if it's um, more classic Marvel because I don't know if it's the style or inks. Like, maybe that also was the first thing that threw me off. I, I liked Butch Geis, and then at the towards the end of the Captain America run, like he switches styles. Uh, you know, you get this kind of hyper detailed uh, stuff from him, which is the stuff I really like. It reminds me more of Steve Epting on the Captain America book that we were reading, and then he's got these kind of. Um, more classic looking style where everything is kind of have more heavily inked maybe it's a change in inker and now we're looking at late 1960s marvel art in our 2010 book in the same issue from where we had the super detailed you know hyper etched black widow over here like literally this is in the same issue three pages apart and that is jarring and i think that's the maybe the thing that turned me off in this first arc as well is that the art was jumping from style to style from one artist for no apparent reason um, so that when Michael Lark comes in in the middle and just sticks the landing and just like does one style all the way through it was like uh, okay and then you know by the time that he leaves Michael Lark leaves the book um, and Butch Geist comes back you're so invested in the story now that you kind of forgive any of the stylistic shifts that happened uh, in the last seven issues or so yeah so I think that's my uh, my final thoughts on Winter Soldier. Our journey has come to an end. Uh, yeah, there's more Brubaker Cap books to read uh, with uh, Steve Rogers, Captain America, but honestly, I'm not going to bother reviewing them from the channel. Uh, I think this ends the Winter Soldier journey, and this ends where um, Brubaker had ideas. Because I, I remember reading those like in singles when they were coming out, and I was like, man, this really isn't that good. Um, and it was great from Death of Captain America, but once once that storyline ended, I, I really feel like it fell off a cliff. And this just kind of shows that, that I was right. So, there you go. It's okay. It's not great. I mean, there's a reason why no one talks about this stuff. It's because it's not great. It's not as great as the first three volumes. So, there you go. Let me know what you guys thought down below of the Winter Soldier series by Ed Brubaker, Butch Geist, and Michael Lark. If you disagreed with me, let me know, please. I want to discuss it down in the comments, and I will see you guys next time here in the Funny Pages.